Okay, we're at this video is going to cover principal components analysis in R. I'm going to introduce you to this data set a little bit that you will be looking at. We're going to analyze an acoustic data set. And uh, acoustic data is pretty commonly analyzed using principal components analysis because the measurements tend to be continuous and a lot of times they're they meet a lot of the assumptions of principal components analysis. Um, the data set we're going to be looking at is an actual data set. It came from um, sound recordings from the site Xeno Canto, and this is a, a site where people can share recordings that they've made of birds all over the world. And the species we're going to look at is a little bird called the mustached babbler, and it's a little brown, gray, and black bird with a little mustache stripe along the side of its face. It's an understory insectivore in Southeast Asia. And um, here is a map from Xenocanto of the recordings that have been made of this bird. And you can see there's a concentration of recordings from peninsular Malaysia and actually parts of Thailand, but mostly peninsular Malaysia and on the island of Borneo. And so this bird, I'm gonna play you um, its song so that you can hear what its song sounds like. So that's what its sound, song sounds like. There is some variation, and you might have heard in that one individual we listened to, it, um, it's the, it sang twice, um, but the second time it added a note. The first song was a three note song, and the second song was a four note song. And there is some variation among, within and among individuals of this species in the number of notes they sing, how fast they sing their notes, how high and low pitched their song is, and there are some variations in sort of the cadence, the way they space the notes apart in the song. And so we might be curious to see if that there is variation that's associated with geography um, that's greater than we might see with just individual variation that might tell us something about the development of say dialects, song dialects in this bird. And so um, for this collection of recordings that you can actually see at least one page of here as I scroll down, um, I downloaded the song, um, recordings that were identified as the song, and that were from Peninsular Malaysia and Borneo, and um, took some measurements on those songs. And so that's the data set that we're going to be using and looking at. So now I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I'm going to go into R. And actually we're in our studio because that's where we've been operating most of the quarter. And here we are in our studio. And we're not going to stay here for long because we're going to use R Commander this week to run our principal components analysis. R Commander is a package in R that makes analysis of some that is, is very easy to use for certain very commonly used analyses. And so it's a menu driven interface. And so it's pretty easy to upload data and do some basic types of statistical analysis. And so we're going to use R Commander for the principal components analysis. Now, um, to do this, you need to install our commander. And so in our studio, you can go to packages, select install, and type in R C M D R. And then select install. And our commander will install into your R. Once it's installed, you can either type library R commander. I like to check in my packages and see that it's there and I select it that way. So I've selected our commander. And what happens when um, our commander actually loads is that you can probably see at the bottom of my screen, I think, that the R insignia has popped up, the R console insignia. And so I'm gonna stop sharing my R studio and show you what actually has popped up and it is our commander. And so if you go to this screen, what you see is a pretty simple screen, and this is our commander, um, and you can actually look at the menus, like look at the data menu, and you have these options, menu-driven options to import a data set. You have menu-driven options to do some basic analyses, and so we're gonna use that this week. So the first thing we're gonna do is import data from an Excel file this week. And there's an Excel file um, uploaded for you to use. Um, you're going to click OK. 
and you're going to upload your data set. Now, because it's uploading uh, an Excel, it's taking importing the data from an Excel sheet, it will ask you if there's multiple worksheets, which one to use. And so you need to know which one to use. Um, this one, it's going to be the one that's titled Data for Lab. And you can then view your data set once it's loaded. Usually, sometimes our commander is a bit glitchy, so it's not showing me my data set here. But I can view it by selecting Edit Data. And so I'm going to make sure I'm sharing that screen. I might have already been, but I just want to make sure that that's the case. And this is what my data set looks like. And it looks just like the data set did in Excel with the first column being um, an identifier for each individual. So these are all different individuals in the data set that, that we got recordings from. Um, and then these are the measurements. The columns two through nine are the measurements that includes the high frequency of the song. So that's the highest pitch of the song. The low frequency of the song. So that the first one is low frequency, the lowest pitch high frequency, the highest pitch of the song, center frequency, which is not that middle point, actually. It's measured slightly differently. Center frequency is the point at which the amount of energy above and below that frequency is equal during the duration of the song. So it has to do with, it's a function of the, the range in the pitch as well as how much energy is put into the different um, notes in the song. Okay, and energy is volume in this case. Um, and then we have um, change in frequency, which is just the low frequency minus the high frequency. We have the center time. And so we have a, a length of the song, which is the delta time. So the beginning time, the start time um, minus the end time is the duration of the song. And then the center time, again, is not that center point in time. It represents the center of the time in which the energy of the song is equal. I know it's kind of hard to grasp, but it has to do with the volume of the song. It's sort of weighting the, this time component based on the volume of the song, the number of notes in the song, and then the speed of the song, which is the notes per second. It's just the number of notes divided by the, what they call the delta time or the duration of the song. Those are the variables we're gonna put into our principal components analysis. I'm going to close this and I'm going to um, share our commander again. And so once I know I have the correct data, I run my analysis. And from the statistics menu, I'm going to select dimensional analysis and then principal components analysis. And um, you can select the variables. And so we basically need to make sure we're selecting all of these variables except for individual. The individual identifier that's telling us it's individual one, two, three, and four will really mess up our analysis if we include it. So we're not going to include it. And so we're going to be using the shift key. I selected one variable and now I'm holding down the shift key and selecting that first range of variables. And now I'm going to hold down the control key while I select the remaining variable so that everything is selected except for individual. I'm going to go into options and just see what my options are. And already by default, it has selected analyze correlation matrix. So there are two types of matrices that you can analyze in a principal components analysis, a covariance matrix, matrix or a correlation matrix. In the case of this data set, a correlation matrix is definitely the correct kind of data uh, of matrix to be analyzing from. I'm going to um, select scree plot and I'm also going to select add principal components to the data set. So it will actually add columns of data that include the basically scores, the coordinates for those principal components. I select OK and I usually select to retain three. That's the maximum number that I could put into a graph that anybody could interpret. So three principal components to retain. I select OK. And then um, I get a series of outputs. So right now I see a graph popping up. And so I'm going to share it. And this is the scree plot. Okay, so this is the plot of how much variance is explained by each principal component. And the first principal component always has the greatest explanatory power, followed by the second, 
and then here's the third. And what I can just see in this pattern is um, there's a big difference between the first and the second and the second and the third. Um, the third and the fourth actually seem to have very similar explanatory power, which is great, much greater than the fifth. So probably the first two explain quite a lot. So um, if you want to look at the output of your um, principal components analysis, it's a little bit clunky in our commander. You go to the markdown tab. So there's a script tab and a markdown tab and you select generate report and it will actually generate a report in HTML. So I'm gonna make sure that you can actually see that report. 